I would like to think that I can now accurately state the country of origin of the people who came solely for the purpose of doing the work and those who actually stayed around for a casual beer or two. I think these experiences undoubtedly taught us the importance of being open to different perspectives and different cultures. Yeah, and do you remember when you told me about Biltong, that dried meat snack from South Africa? And yeah, remember when I told you about the Austrian dildo? I'm oh, sorry, you say Austrian dildos? <laughs> no, you never I never talked didn't. about this again. <laughs> <laughs> what I meant to say was dildo, the Austrian traditional dress. But yeah, typical IBA story. For the program, again? <laughs> no, seriously, guys. From the admission, from the application, all the way to receiving this lovely piece of paper today, program management has been there to support us throughout. We'd also like to give words so much time to break our assignments and exam papers. For some of us, for some of us, this really came with panic attacks and nervous breakdowns. Yeah, and on a side note, uh, for all the professors who made us fly back to Rotterdam for research, <laughs> if you're dying of guilt on the inside today, if it's eating at your soul, professors, don't worry. We have provided the following banking details. <laughs> And of course, the proceeds of these kind donations will go towards the IBA Research Fund, which will of course put to very good use. New president, and you know, fair warning, if you, if you talk enough about the president of the United States, your mouth, start, you start feeling and sounding like the president of the United States, it's strange. This phenomenon that happens, okay. And I realize I look nothing like Donald Trump, you know. But, yeah, yeah. I know I look nothing like him. My hands are relatively large, you know. But uh, anyway, I am. Uh, I I am t here to say that uh, it is strange what happens, you know. If you look at Donald Trump, you'll notice his eyes are never fully open, and his mouth is never ever closed. Okay, and. So yeah, I started sounding a bit like Donald Trump. I worked on a whole show called Trump Up the Volume, and uh, pretty soon, uh, when Donald Trump became president, this Dutch comedy show called Zondag met Lubach, uh, they decided to welcome the new president uh, from the Netherlands in terms he could understand. And so that's when they came up with this video. And I saw the script, they asked me to do the voice. I said, uh, oh, let me read this, and it's like, Grab him by the pony. I thought, oh, come on, that's that, this is gonna be funny. Uh, and so they wanted it uh, with just a, an American voice, you know. We know it's going to be America first, but can we just say the Netherlands second? And uh, and then they thought, like, well, we know you do the Trump thing, can you try that as well? And I was like, okay, let's give it a try. We know it's going to be America first, but can we just say the Netherlands second? And everybody agreed, yeah, that's probably, that's probably better. Uh, so this video is now known as the Netherlands Second Video. And so many people have seen it. It's so great. It's so fantastic. It's all over the world, totally viral. And, uh, and I have people from the United States, you know, saying, like, have you seen this video? It's about the Netherlands, and it's, so, and it's about the president. You would love this. And I said, yeah, Mom, that's my voice, you know. <laughs> um, so anyway, people keep asking, do you think the president has seen this? And I said, I don't know, but I do know that this video about the Netherlands now has more views on YouTube than the official Donald Trump inauguration video. So, hey, <laughs> go figure. <laughs> 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 and I did it to the toilet. It's not a my chair. Anyway, let's talk about uh, you guys. You know, personally, you know, if you're like me, you're from Chicago, the second city, Rotterdam, second city of the Netherlands. It's great. I feel at home here. Uh, this is the theater that brought me to the Netherlands. And, uh, you know, it's Boom Chicago, uh, celebrating 25 years next year. How about that? Uh, uh, we actually still have a letter from the city of Amsterdam, a framed letter that says, thank you for asking us if this business plan would be possible. And they, they said, it is not possible. It is so, it is not possible. Uh, live here long enough. You might know some of these <coughs> culture shock moments yourselves. 
uh, I call it culture shock therapy, you know, because uh, at, at some point, even though it's a bit of a shock, citizenship exists. Thousand empty parking spaces. Please help us fill them. Uh, there's so much space. It's so amazing. Uh, so anyway, as it's one reason to be proud of the Netherlands. I mean, this is the Nether This is the new. This is like just a tip of the new land that was reclaimed from the sea. And uh, <laughs> you know, land planning guys just had so much fun and. Uh, just, it's a visual joke for the airplanes, and that's, you know, that's what you can do when you create your own land. It's amazing. Or, you know, maybe it's like some magic Mario mushroom joke I don't even get. Uh, I think that's so, it's, you can be proud of that. Have you seen this article? This one just came out this year, National Geographic. This tiny country feeds the world. And it is true, there's so many exports that come, not just with the port of Rotterdam, but in terms of value, the second biggest exporter in the world is the Netherlands, this tiny country. And guess who's the biggest? It's totally America is number one. And so, at least in terms of agricultural exports, the Netherlands is indeed second. So you can be proud of that. Um, the bikes, there are more bikes than people here. We don't know how they're repopulating, but we are trying to cull the herd. The family car in the Netherlands is a bike. It's amazing. And they always have, like, Helmets? Nah, but a windshield for the child, yes. That's fair. First things first, you know, the wind might be harmful. A truck hitting us? Nah, that's no problem. Bike paths! Aren't they so romantic? And it's so civilized having a bike path. There's a space on the road just for your bike. Other cities don't really get the whole concept. Yeah, this is London. I think this is Belgium. <laughs> just Good luck, bikes. Take your chances. And in America, they have this one. <laughs> Give the cyclist space. Where should we put that sign? In the cycle path. Good job, guys. And please, when, uh, you, know, you have to remember, when you're in the Netherlands, uh, bicycles always get a special, <laughs> special priority. <laughs> To translate, this sign says, if you want to live, please wait for the train, except for bikes. Uh, just, bikes go wherever they want. But if you are, you know, biking with children, if you're biking with small children, please remember to wear appropriate undergarments. <laughs> please, people. Uh, now, I know some people might take the Trump stuff the wrong way, and, and I don't mean it. You know, he's the president, and, you know, uh, I make fun of him, just like I made fun of the president before him. And I will point out that if Dutch people want to come up and say, Oh, yeah, it's so typical American that you would elect this guy with the blonde hair and the big mouth and he thinks the rules don't apply to him. Never in the Netherlands could we have a politician <laughs> with blonde hair and a big mouth and thinks the rules don't apply to him. <laughs> Never could we have Kier Wilders. This guy... Indeed, he came in second in the previous election, and I will point out that Dutch people, let's just remember, Donald Trump is, he wouldn't be here without the Netherlands. And I, yeah, in fact, Donald Trump is a little bit thanks to Dutch people. How did Donald Trump get his start in business? It was crooked real estate deals in Manhattan. What was his inspiration for crooked real estate deals in Manhattan? I wonder when the entire island was purchased for only 24 gulden from the Native Americans. I think that was Dutch people. Um, don't forget, Donald Trump got his start uh, in America. His, his, he made his name on television with The Apprentice. That was that reality show. Uh, reality show which became a reality thanks to the Big Brother house back in, what, who was that? That was, uh, oh yeah, that was the Dutch people who started that. You're also responsible, and yes, Donald Trump relied on some inherent racism in America to get elected, and that goes all the way back to when America owned slaves. Slaves who were sold to us by, what country was that again? Oh yes, that was the Netherlands, so yes, Donald Trump is Dutch people's responsibility. Why do you think he paints his face orange every day? 
It is, that's the Dutch national family color. I love it. I feel so orange all the time. It's fantastic. Every day is King's Day for me. I feel so royal. <laughs> anyway, um, if you want more, I can yeah, send you to that YouTube site. It's, it's great. And I will end on the idea that, uh, you know, for Dutch people, it's not always easy. You know, doing business on an international basis. But you make it work. The national airline of the Netherlands is Kalen. In English, it's pronounced kill em. But you guys make it work as an airline. One of the largest financial institutions in the country is called Rob a Bank. But still, you guys make it work. I love it. All the blank notebooks, they say no titties. And it's an open and tolerant society. They put it no titties. Uh, breakfast here is like the worst croissants every time. Lunch is the worst. And if you want a vegetarian uh, replacement for the worst, they, it's called homos. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's offensive. Uh, this is, uh, if you want to do any baking, you have to find white bastard sucker. Uh, this is a health drink. It was called AIDS. Didn't do very well. If you want a daycare center where your children will be safe from inappropriate contact, fondle kids is it. Uh, the barf menu for your pets. So nice to eat it twice. This is a dog grooming salon called Dog Style. I was taking a picture of this shop. That guy came out and said, uh, what are you doing? I said, do you know what Dog Style means in English? And he said, yes. Culture, shop, therapy, people. Uh, okay, this is a cleaning company. They're called Ew. This is another cleaning company who are called Robbers. Yes, trust them in your office. We're Robbers. Reinforcing every stereotype, this is the pot delivery van, man. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, if you want to blow up your car, this is a place called Fire Zone. This is a shop in the egg. I don't know what, it's a... This sign clearly says, black kids for sale, sale, sale. I don't know what they do there. This is a product or a service, it's called Baby Dump. And this is apparently the revenge of all the unwanted dumped babies. Mama, d <laughs> Mama, die, die, die. I should leave. Anyway, that's it for me. Congratulations, everyone. RSM, well done. The famous attempt to cross the show has a check team. Thank you. Guys. Thinking, oh, come on, it should all be a piece of cake. So let's go back in time and take a nice walk. So it all starts in this Eureka Week thing. There you are, all fresh and innocent from home, with the best intentions to make new friends. You end up meeting some cool people, and you realize you have a pretty good-looking neighbor in your new student house. Now the first few months fly by, right? I mean, this is amazing. How is it possible that every day there is something different to celebrate? So after you've hopped from one social drink to another, you realize there was one small detail you forgot about. Exams! Right! Okay, okay, time to focus, time to be productive, time to perform. Maybe you should start dropping some hobbies and make some time for study. Anyway, time goes on. Some friends left, some new people came in, and you have a nice group of friends now. I mean, can you imagine? You only knew these guys for a year or two, and you're already so close. Time for some fresh air. You can now do anything you like for the next few months. You went to visit some cool university abroad during your exchange, or you could have done an internship and learned what it means to do business, or a minor to get a better taste of that subject you like so much. So after coming back full of new experience and friends, now comes the final sprint. Oh yeah, the bachelor thesis. All these horrible stories from these ex-bachelor students probably creep you out a bit. And you start working and worrying and working and worrying and working and worrying. But in the end you realize, work was really all there was to it. And you've done just fine. So look at you now, all grown up, sitting in your graduation ceremony. It wasn't such a bad walk, right? Congratulations, guys. You're done.